Good morning, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday, January 27th. Uh, we're here again for Wake Up Legendary. We've got an awesome guest here today, a returning guest. And it took me a second to realize he was a returning guest because he's got a totally different uh, facial hair thing going on. And last time he was in, he had this legendary uh, handlebar mustache, which is, um, well, I don't know if it's called a handlebar mustache, actually. But to me, the handlebar is, well, we all have this conversation when he pops on. And then we can ask him. Um, but if you're here and you are uh, joining us live here at 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, drop us a little comment. Let us know that you're here. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay, if my audio video is coming through and we've got a good connection. Um, what's up, Ben, Jose, Al, Amanda, uh, Charlotte? Good to see you guys in here. Uh, welcome in. If you're new, uh, to our community. Uh, we do this every single day. Uh, not, I was going to say seven days a week, five days a week, Monday through Friday. Okay. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 10 AM Eastern standard time. Um, and we're here every single day with a new guest or a returning guest or people from our community. And, uh, you know, just over the last week, one thing that's really stood out to me is people keep saying, um, man, there's just a really unique community here and it's hard to find that anywhere else. And I, I sometimes take that for granted because I'm around it all day, every day, all the time. And, um, so, uh, anyway, you'll find that here and you'll find that, you know, in the chat here and you'll find that with our guests here, especially. Um, so we're just, we're happy and we're, we're, um, I don't know. I, I would say honored and blessed, but I feel like those are just kind of buzzwords people throw out. But we really are. Um, we really are grateful to have a lot of awesome guests come on our show. So today uh, we've got uh, a guy, Ray. We're going to bring him on, and he's just got. Well, you know what? Without any introduction, what's going on, Ray? Let's throw him on. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for coming back on. We had you, we were just talking before, uh, for everybody who's here with us, we were just talking before we went live that, uh, it took me a second. It took me like a minute to realize, oh my gosh, you were on the show before. And I asked you and you were like, yeah, but I had this mustache going on. Is that called a handlebar mustache? And that's what I call it. I call it either the handlebar mustache or you know, baseball fans. I call it the Raleigh fingers mustache. Oh, all right. I like that. I'm a little bit, I guess I should have kept it. I'm not going to disappoint anybody, but this is, this is what I got going on these days. <laughs> I love it. It's that's the, where do you live? Uh, Northeast Texas. Okay. I was going to say, I guess if you're in Texas, maybe not quite as much, but I was going to say that's, that's like the winter time hockey beard. You know, that's the beard where it's like, I need to, I need to stay warm a little bit. Yeah. We don't get a whole lot of super cold weather down here. It's about 45 degrees this morning. So. But it oh, does. Nice. One. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, that happens in Phoenix here too. It's we we get some. Yeah, it just not all the time, but yeah. Um, cool, awesome. Uh, so there's a lot of people. Lovely facial hair, she says. Uh, there's a lot of people in here who didn't meet you the first time around. So I thought it'd be cool if you could just give us a little bit of like, hey, here's my story. Uh, here's what I do, and you know, you've got a full time gig and. You're doing this on the side, which is tough. Um, I've done that, um, but very rewarding, I think, because you really have to work for it. But just um, give people a little bit of background on you and how did you get started online? And I, I think that's uh, that alone is really powerful. People or powerful for people to hear. Okay, well, really uh, started online several years ago. Uh, you know, I, I tried the little, the things that everybody, well, not everybody, but most people try, like I did the designing t-shirts and selling t-shirts online and learning the, learning Facebook ads and all that several years ago. I had a little bit of success. Um, and I would say that was probably six, seven years ago. Okay. Uh, and that was probably when I first noticed or realized that, uh, because of what was going on in my life prior I was not going to be ready for retirement. So mm. I wanted to find something extra. So that's kind of when my whole journey started and it was off and on for several years, you know, try it, give up, try it, give up. And, yeah. and it was, it was early last year, 2020. One of the good things that happened in 2020 was I found legendary marketer. Um, 
and I came online through Matt Steinman, who's been a who's been a guest on the show several times, and I'm and he's in the TikTok training as well. And uh, you know, we just hit it off. Um, he was a he's been a great mentor at this point, and I, I'm we ended up bonding pretty well and having some common interests. So you know, to this point, now here I am, uh, working legendary marketer, uh, trying to help as many people as I can try not to get to where I was, you know, maybe five years ago and help them on their road to retirement if they're not ready. So that's kind of what I'm, where I'm at, you know, I'm just uh, yeah. doing what I can to help out. Yeah. Trying to develop those skills and those, those highly paid skills that, um, you know, uh, I think that it, it is interesting to me how people can learn those skills at any age. Obviously we had a, a an 81 year old Don, uh, his name is Don Halloran on the other day. It's like at any age, like his desire to grow and to expand and just learn new stuff just has never, ever gone away. It's interesting. I, I think that a lot of people, I think the hard part for, um, for, for, uh, maybe people who are nearing retirement, I don't, I never want to say like old people because it just sounds mean, but like for people who are like 50, 60, I think one of the hard pieces sometimes that I see is it's hard to sort of sort through all of the bullshit and the, and the people who are not good and the people who are the communities that are not legit and stuff like that. It, yeah. Was that your experience too? Yeah. I mean, it takes a, it takes a little bit of uh trial and error, you know, just like mm -hmm. just about everything else does. But mm -hmm. eventually you start to realize and start to see um, pretty quickly who the fake, the quote unquote fake people are and the people that are really there to help. And once yeah. you once you can pick up on that and maybe the first couple of sentences that you've spoken with this person and you, and you realize you can move on. And if, they, if you don't think that they're going to be helpful or you guys just aren't clicking, just move on find somebody that you click with, stick with it and just go really. Yeah. And in, in terms of like the degree of importance, would you say that, um, maybe this hard gate, but would you say that, um, there's a, the community part is more important and the people or the training or both. Is it kind of equal? I mean, Obviously, it's it's a little it's better to have both, but if you're gonna have one and not the other, I would go with the community because you're always gonna you're always gonna end up learning from the community as you go. Um, in my experience within Legendary Marker, I find that I start just scrolling through the messages late at night just to just to see if there's anything I missed, retain some knowledge, and and pass it along. You know, yep. whether it's on TikTok or YouTube or however you guys are getting your message out, just just getting the message out, learning as you go. It, it, like you said, I have, I do have a full-time job and it is not ideal, but, uh, there, you can find time in the day to make this work. And yeah. if you use the resources that legendary provides, then you can succeed. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, no, I think that makes sense. I, I feel like what you hit on there was, interesting because you said both learn and give back. There's something really, there's something really powerful. I think when people make sort of a shift from just taking from a community and you've like, I see it all the time, but you obviously give back so much to our community too, which we're really thankful for. Um, Cause there's just a lot of, and we know this, uh, but there's a lot of people in our community who just really give a lot to our community. And you know, some of it is at like potential, you know, financial gain at some point, and some of it's just not, <laughs> you know? And so it is just a, it's a very unique thing. And we're, um, yeah, we're really, really thankful to you and to a, a lot of our community who's just, you know, the different people at different um, experience levels. So, you know, the way we always explain it is like, well, you might not think you have something to give, but really it's like, it's a third grader teaching a second grader, you know, mathematics at third grade level. So they've got a little bit of knowledge, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, something they know how to learn, but 
it's just new to them. And you might think, well, I'm just in third grade, you know, like I'm just, this is just beginner stuff, but it's one step past what everybody else has. I think that's really important. It is. And, and what, and the one thing that I really want to hit on what you said there was everybody has aha moments every now and then, like, why didn't I think of that and lock it away and use it again. But at some yep. point, at some point you're going to realize that if you just start helping people, then everything, everything else is going to fall into place. Yep. You, know, you know, you start, you start sharing your knowledge and those people are going to see, well, well, hell Ray knows what he's talking about. And then they're going to start asking questions and that's how you build your own little community. And yep. that's what, that's what we do in, in the legendary. Group. You know, what, um, what in terms of, do, do you think that, um, do you feel like your age has like maybe not growing up a technology has has made it harder or how have you battled with that or do you not find it quite as hard like how do you look at that well i I, mean, I grew up in a little bit different situation my mother was an engineer at ibm and my father worked at eds for 35 years in computers and okay we had like the first computer in our house at school so i've been on computers since i can remember so oh wow see little, that's totally different yeah but um cool. that's another reason i think i can help you know because i do have the experience the technology experience to uh make people less afraid of it yeah and, you know it, it's 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 a process just like everything else and if you figure it out then yeah you're, so you're that right. <laughs> me saying that um you know, you might not have grown up with computers is actually the furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we, we had computers going, I don't remember when the first one we got, but it was, it was before I was 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. Now, okay, so here's, let's flip that then. Do you feel like that's helped you? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously it helps. I mean, I, I, I've built web pages for doctors. I've, I've done all kinds of things that, maybe the, I don't know, the average 50 year old hasn't done, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but I do have experience with that kind of stuff. And I go in and out, I built training programs for where I work my, my nine to five, you know, online training programs that go out. Cool. Global. So I do have quite a bit of experience there, but I, I do know what it's like because I deal with less technical people on a daily basis. You know, I'm more or less the tech guy in my job working from home. We have to get on Zoom meetings or in our case, WebEx meetings and, yep. and instruct people on how to fix their issues. And whenever that comes up, I get a phone call. So I, that's what <laughs> I do. So it does help to have the technical background for sure, but it's not impossible to learn it. Yeah. Um, and then with, with that piece, with that element, I also think like it's it's kind of important for people to realize like it doesn't matter really when you learned that or when you had a computer in your house or whatever. Like I think sometimes people are like, well, but I didn't gr see I didn't grow up like he did. And that's why he's got the advantage. There's always a point at which somebody had zero knowledge about anything. Right. And I think just that gets lost in translation sometimes where people forget like, hey, no, everybody started from scratch. Everybody started from the same even no knowledge playing field, even me, like, sure, I might have grown up with computers. But uh, I worked a part time job in college. And um, it was just like, there really wasn't much for me to do. Uh, I, I don't actually know why I was hired in that role. It was just like, okay. Uh, and, and so I was just sitting at my office desk. And basically, what I did is I waited for appointments or waited for somebody to come in It's like kind of a front office desk or, or uh, uh, like a, like a receptionist desk kind of thing. And I would do menial tasks here and there. And yeah, I just sat on that computer and learned to code all day long. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I didn't know how to do it. I sat on Google and I Google searched, how do I move things on a web page? You know, like people forget that there's just these like moments where you just start Google searching and you go down forums and you start reading sites. And, and I think sometimes like people come to me and just like, this is so overwhelming. And I'm like, yeah, like everything you learn in life is just completely new and none of your the reason you feel overwhelmed is your brain is not trained to go down those neural pathways and you have to teach it. Um, so I, I like that piece. I like that element where 
Um, and that's part of why I like what you said about the community. So the reason that I like the community piece more than the training, although I think the training is super important, but the community piece, especially in marketing, the marketing is changing all the time. The, the landscape is changing all the time. And the big piece is having people around you who are trying different things mm -hmm. and uh, experimenting with different things. People from all backgrounds, ages, people trying things that we've never seen before. This whole TikTok thing came up a year ago and came up out of nowhere. And we almost didn't pick up on it. Like we were pretty close to just being like, nah, this is lame. And then like, lo and behold, like it just exploded. Uh, and there's still other communities online that haven't even picked up on it that have, that are not doing anything like what people in our community are doing on TikTok. doesn't exist. Um, so anyway, I think that's a big piece to this whole thing. And I wanted to sort of validate, you know, your share about co why community is so important is because when you start to get thousands, even hundreds, but thousands and 10,000s of people who are online, who are sort of collaborating or bouncing ideas or commenting on each other's stuff and watching each other, man, is it powerful? It really is. I mean, and like you said about the training, the training's, the training's great and it is, you know, imperative to have good training, but you really could just learn from people. I mean, I know that's not, that sounds like training, but what I'm saying is you can just learn by observing what's going on inside whatever group you're a part of and yep. just put the pieces together um, and, and, and try not to worry about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, Really? I mean, you just, if you fail, you fail, but yep. you, know, you can always just try it again. And, you know, going back to something you said earlier, you know, you start learning stuff out of necessity. Now, when I, I said I was building web pages, well, I was, I was a single father. I raised two, two daughters on my own. And both girls wanted to go to cheerleading school class or whatever you call it. And I was like, I just can't afford it. You know, this was 15, 20 years ago. Hmm. And I just told them, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll build you a web page. I had no idea how to do it at the time. So yep. you just you figure it out out of necessity yeah. and it to be cheerleading. So I used that example going forward and just kind of reflect on that every single time, which you can find a way. You know, if you figure it out, just, just yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, there's, it, there's just an interesting element. I don't know what it is, if it's the pain, right. Or if it's the, um, you get to a certain breaking point where it's like, I don't have any other option. Right. Cause I feel like I've been in that situation before, but I also see people, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I, I, I watch some people who, um, will attempt like, like for instance, the whole like TikTok thing, right? There's, there's an entire group of people who will go on TikTok and make videos and they push through all of this pain and, and, um, insecurity and just like, I don't want to do this, but damn it, I have to, right? I'm on my last, this is, I, I gotta do it. And there's something there. And then there's, um, there's other people where it's like, um, it's, it's, and I don't, I'm not trying to shame these people because I, I think at some point, maybe in a year or two or three years with something else, they'll break through. Right. But, but in the moment right now, there's the other pool of people who are just like, eh, I don't know, you know, yeah. and there's just, there's some missing link. I think it's different for everybody maybe, but there's some different link, something else that hasn't clicked quite yet to get them to push over the edge. It's just fascinating because I know for me, it was just like, there was just something internally that was like, I have to, I gotta do this. And for me, it was like, um, I was in college and I kept this, I kept having this realization. Both my parents had worked, you know, 30, 40 years in the exact same profession their whole life. Um, and we weren't super, I, I would say lower middle class. And I was like, man, that seems like a long time to be in, to just kind of be in the same place and they were saving and stuff. So whatever. But, um, at the time, you know, like in college, I was like, I think I need to opt out of this. Like, I think I got to figure out how to opt out of this or, you know, I don't, I don't know. And yeah. so anyway, it just, it just led me down this path of like, I, I screw this. Like, I really, really, really want to like, 
I got to opt out of this whole system, this whole game that people are playing. Like I just can't do it. So I finally, I think it was like, and here's the, here's the thing to go back to the community. It wasn't so much that I felt that internally. It was that I had the realization that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of other people also felt that same way. And there was this sort of secret belief we all held that we were right. And that there was a di- sort of an alternate path that's not really talked about. That's not really, you know, whatever. Um, and that to me was a big trick. It was a big trigger because then it felt like not just that I was this outcast. It actually felt like I had a piece of my identity attached to uh, that sort of I, back in the day, we called it the hidden path um, that, that most people just don't take. But right here, right now, in front of our very eyes, we've been doing these lives. Uh, Dave has and I have and uh, for all, for years, but really like since the pandemic started. And it's just constant, never ending flow of people just saying like, I'm opting out. I'm opting out. I'm opting out. <laughs> yeah, but those people might come back. You never know. And yep. You know, you and I obviously have taken different paths to get to where we are. You had a, you know, you dropped out of college. Is that what you were saying? No, I finished college, but I got three years through college and realized like, oh, I'm not going to use this degree. And uh, (laughs) this is not a waste of my time. I grew a lot and I got a lot out of it. I I don't really think anything in life is necessarily just a total waste of time. But um, three and a half years into college, I, I, I was like, yeah, you know what? this isn't, this is not the game I'm going to (laughs) play. So, I mean, similarly I had, I mean, I went to college, but I went to college to play baseball and, uh, I played my, I was a terrible student, horrible. I mean, I think I I went to a small school in in Texas, which is now the largest school in Texas, uh, high school and graduated in 1988 out of a class of maybe 215. I was 200 and something. So I, I, I mean, I wasn't a great student. I knew, I had some some brain cells, but I just yep. wasn't a good student. And my yep. brother was the one that forced me to go to college and play baseball. And you know, so what the heck? I mean, you're gonna what's better than going to college, playing baseball, and and partying? You know, so I yeah, did, nothing. <laughs> I did that in my first in my first semester. I got a point two zero three GPA, <laughs> and and you know. And when you send that back to your parents, of course, at that time, you couldn't text it to them. I had to, you know, drive back the three hours home and say, oh, yeah, here's my here's what I did the first semester of college. You sent to mom and dad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's so pretty rough. I missed my first semester of baseball. I made it back. I went to junior college and got my grades up. And then I went back and for a second time. Coach gave me a second chance. Couldn't do it. I just, I mean, I just wasn't a student. So I ended up dropping out and never made it to my, through my sophomore year. Like I said, I knew computers. So I used that knowledge to find a corporate job. Yep. And I got lucky. You know, I got, I mean, I say I'm lucky because, I mean, I got a job that got my kids through school with no student debt. And, you know, I do have some retirement. I've got some skills from it. But, yep. you know, it's just a different paths. You know, and, and it goes to show you that your path and my path, however, they're different. We got here for the same reason. We're just looking for something. Yep. And, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to find. So true. So true. That really brings up for me, um, man, it, maybe where our paths cross and the similarities is in the skills and just purely um, just spending time around the skills, you know, like just immersed in them, playing around with them, toying with them. Right. I think, um, you know, some people and, uh, you know, I, I, let me, let me just, I'm trying not to, I I don't want to talk down to anybody, but, um, I think a lot of times people because of their anxiety or because of their stress or because of whatever, spend a lot of time just scrolling on social media or, um, Netflixing all night or, you know, just kind of lost out somewhere in outer space, not using a lot of their time unproductively. Right. And uh, like, I imagine you 
uh, sitting up all night learning how to build and design websites. And I know for me, I used to, I used to like, I worked in coffee shops. I had to bike like two miles in like zero degree weather. It was miserable, but I would get up at 5.30 a.m. No, I would get up at five, had to be there at 5.30, uh, work until like two, uh, get off, like basically pass out on my living room floor for an hour and nap. And then like get up and just start building websites and trying to sell shit online. <laughs> like, And I would just, I would freak out about it. I would go crazy over it. For me, it almost destroyed my marriage. But, uh, but once I learned how to sort of harness that and once it was a combination, like both my wife and I, we both individually spent a good amount of time in therapy. <laughs> and once she learned how to maybe not need me quite as much, and I learned how to not need the sort of income or this side thing all the time. Um, but man, I would, I, I mean, not kidding. Like she would fall asleep at night at like 10 and I would sit up until two and then get up at five. And just like, I was so psychotic about it yeah. because I was like, I know at some point there's a certain point where familiarity and the hours that you put in and how much time and energy you pour into something something has to come of it. <laughs> like yeah. it just, you don't just sit there and obsess over stuff forever and learn and grow and figure things out without something sprouting from it. It's not how the world works. Right. So, and for me, um, it turned out in different ways. I mean, it turned out in affiliate marketing and I sold my own digital course and really like where I find a home is, is inside of companies and inside of communities. And that's just kind of been my route. But over time, learning emotional intelligence and learning the actual technical skills and learning how systems work and stuff like that, man, huge payoff, uh, both in terms of financial, but also really like fulfillment, like actual feeling like, hey, I can make a difference because now all of my experience, I've it, there's thousands, tens of thousands of people who come into our community who everything they're trying to learn and everything they've been through, I've personally experienced and I've spent hours laboring over it. So I just, I feel like that's a big key piece to this because my guess is that, you know, you grew up with sort of that tech, you grew up with the old IBMs, the huge computers, and there's certain hours put in, there's certain familiarity for other people coming in this at 60 or whatever. I always, you know, I referenced to Gary V and he's always talking about how, look, if you're 40, you're basically an infant, uh, especially in this day and age, you've got uh, so many years ahead, to just learn the skills and, uh, play the long game here because that's going to pay off in the end. Like you're going to hit 60, 70 and realize, wow, I've still got, I feel great. I've got lots of years ahead of me. And now I've spent the last 10, 20 years building these amazing skills that are high paying skills. And you know what? I can retire, but I can also generate cash flow with all these skills that I've got sitting in my little office in my little retirement home. You know, That's it's so point. underrated. I can't even, I can't even say how much it's, it's like, it's like, the value of generating a dollar today would be like one and the value of generating s these high paying skills over the next 10 years is like 10,000. It's 10,000 times more valuable. Yeah. Well, no, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, and if you, if you can, whatever, whatever path you take to get there, you know, uh, just, just stick with it. Yeah. It's my advice. Um, and you mentioned, you know, getting to retirement and having a home. Well, that was one of the big leaps that we took in 2020. I used to have a, a beautiful apartment in downtown Dallas with a rooftop pool and a beautiful view of the skyline. And, and I loved it. I, I, I yeah. loved, you know, it was, it was fantastic. But what we decided to do, and you're talking about getting to that retirement home, and to motivate myself, I went ahead, let the lease go out, Lost the, lost the, got rid of the apartment, and the wife and I bought this fifth wheel travel trailer we're in, and we're just gonna. I'm getting ready for retirement. I'm gonna hit the road. I love it, and, I, and I'd like to. You know, obviously, I can work from home if I want. That's what I. That's what I do now. Um, but it's 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 been a fantastic journey, and you know, the little aha moments. You know, I hate to keep on going back to that, but if you do have them, the best ones 
are the ones that you can you know oh, I, I saw somebody the other day that was was wondering how to do this you go back and find it and you tell that person that's rewarding and that's what that's what I more or less live for you know I like making things happen and helping people get to where they want to be so it is a really fulfilling feeling it really is and once you once you figure that out once you figure out that helping people is going to get you where you want to be that's your biggest aha moment and you're going to start realizing that if you just keep on helping people everything else is going to take care of itself yeah that's what i think i mean I yeah. <laughs> I'm learning that. I feel like you've got sort of more life history. That's that, that, that statement is probably more meaningful to you than it is me. Cause I'm still really learning that at 31, but right. I think it still applies. And I have learned that in a lot of ways. Um, man, that's powerful. That's powerful. I, I think that that is uh, a message. I hope everybody hears. Um, I was going to uh, throw up your TikTok, but, you know, just to wrap up, do you have anything, you know, that you want to say to you know, what we have 124 people on here live, anything you want to say or anything you feel like is, you know, just that you're currently learning now? I feel like you kind of like just did, but anything that you're, you're thinking about and, um, you know, want to share with people who are maybe just getting started in their online journey and, um, maybe hitting some roadblocks and, and, you know, hitting all these techie issues that everybody hits. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess my, my best piece of advice would be understand that uh, if you're doing well at this and I see a lot of people out there, that are in TikTok, and I've, and I've gained a lot of friends through this whole journey and yeah. some of them do better than others. But if you think you've got it figured out, you don't. It's not, you're never a hundred percent there. Um, yeah. And if you can, if you can glean some, some knowledge off of somebody else, I mean, that's going to happen every single day. If you give it a shot, if you go out there and actually look for it, you're going to learn something new. And, and that's what I try to do every day. I try and build on the knowledge that I have. And, and I really, within the past five months, four or five months of, of dealing with, with Matt on the, the other Matt, Matt Steinman, yeah. on, on a daily basis, that guy is something new every day. I mean, he's been doing it for 17 years and, and he knows his shit, but yeah. every single day he sends me something. He's like, let's try this. And you know, we piece it together and eventually you're going to put something together that is concrete that you can continue to build on that works, but you can keep on building on top of that. And it's just going to yes. get better and better and just never stop. You know, never stop building the business, more or less, yeah. you know, because it's it is a business and it does take work. Um, it takes concentration um, and a whole lot of effort and a whole lot of communication. The, going back to the TikTok challenge, there was no way in hell I would have been on TikTok a year ago. And now I go out and, and I, I, I maybe take it to the next level a little bit. I, I produce my videos a little bit more because I have a little bit more fun with that. I'm a drone pilot, so I get my drones into the into the videos and all that. So I Sweet. I like to have fun with it as we go, but just keep on learning. You know, never think that you know it all because you don't. Period. And then next thing might just take you even you know knock you up a couple more levels. So I love it. I couldn't I have said that better. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm even, you know, I've, I've been doing all of the, just everything for the last, there's never, there's never an end. There just isn't. I sometimes think there is, but there isn't. There's never an end because the internet, uh, you wake up every day and it's different every day, something new every day. And it's not like it's always this daunting challenge, but it's always, it's not that way. It's always a new revelation. There's always I a new Wow, I didn't know I could do that. Wow, I didn't know I could. That's powerful. That's cool. I finally figured this out. I remember like me trying to figure out how to code. It was every day I, I like one comma was missing and I was like, "Oh, I didn't know that." And boom, the whole website works. And you're like, "Man, all right. Now I know." That's a magical moment when you yeah. get something when you get something to work like that and you've been working on it for however long whether it's 5 minutes or 5 months. Once it starts working, that's the reward. Bingo. Yeah. 
Uh, Ray, thanks for coming on. Um, there's just, there's, uh, there's so many, yeah, there's just so many big things to pull from today. Uh, I hope that people go back and watch this again. Um, but, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. We yeah. really appreciate it. I appreciate it. And, um, I loved our conversation. Yeah. Anytime. Cool. We'll have you back again. All right. Sounds good. Cool. All right. See you, Ray. Uh, guys, another episode. Um, Man, I, I that was that was honestly inspiring to me because uh, just the reflection back and sort of thinking through and learn and and just reflecting on um, where you've been, where I've been, and where I'm going, and things that I learned. Um, if you guys got any sort of value from this, if you got any sort of um, aha moment from this, leave Ray a comment. And, uh, he can go back and read through those, but leave him a comment and let him know, you know, let him know that, you know, you enjoyed it or something was impactful or whatever. So, uh, follow him on TikTok. Uh, his TikTok is right there. Recommended by Ray. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, go give him a follow, uh, give him a shout out in his comments, blow his videos up. And, um, yeah, we'll see. We're going to be back here tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. Uh, the rest of the week, Dave will be here tomorrow and Friday, and we've got awesome guests lined up just as usual. So, um, if you want, you can get a text message reminder every time we, that we go live. So in the mornings at 8 AM, we send out a little short text message, just kind of letting you know what we're going to be talking about. And we'll also give you a link straight over to the Facebook. So, uh, you can just tap that link and then boom, gone. So it's, uh, ooh, other side, eight, one, three. 813. Oh, this is backwards. So I'm trying 296 8553. You just send a text message and you text W U L, the letters W U L. Make sure your autocorrect doesn't screw it up because sometimes I see people like type in something that's close, like the, the name Will or different stuff like that because their autocorrect got them. But uh, text that number. Uh, eight, one, three, two, nine, six, eight, five, five, three, the, the letters W U L. Um, we'll be back here again tomorrow. We'll see you 10 AM Eastern, same time, same place. Take it easy. See you guys.